Hello and welcome to the Goth and Glam in this week's edition of Expat Living. Now, as one of the most dynamic cities in Southeast Asia, Ho Chi Minh City has emerged as a major capital for luxury and style for any gentleman. One of these gentlemen is Ken Smith, an American couturier and stylist, as well as tailor. So who may he actually be? Why don't you take a look all for yourself? My name is Ken Smith, and I was born 1967 in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, myself, I have my own style, and it, it projects what I want people to see, which is a classic gentleman. Uh, so there's not a lot of following fashion trends, because those come and go so quickly that nobody in, that's a professional can really keep up with them. So a lot of my own cuts tend to be more retro, uh, more like 1920s, 30s, or 40s cuts. And I use a lot of those types of patterns in the suits and shirts that I get. Uh, where I'm a little different is that I try to choose more interesting colors that maybe other people in business wouldn't select. A lot of it's about matching colors and patterns in an interesting way uh, that make it so that it doesn't look so much like a uniform. I came to Vietnam uh, in 2003 initially to be a consultant. Uh, my background in the U.S. is more in finance, sales and marketing. And I saw in Vietnam in 2003 a country that was on a very fast, uh, rapid pace upwards economically. Early on, I discovered that at my size and build, it was next to impossible for me to buy clothes off the rack in any department store because they just simply didn't stock sizes for big foreigners. Uh, I tried uh, various tailor shops, but uh, found that a lot of times the, uh, the sewing was very good technically, but the details were lacking as uh, this was not really uh, a suit culture at that time. So I thought that there might be an opportunity to develop a new brand uh, specifically for uh, business people here and uh, set about writing a business plan and then uh, developing the team to start uh, creating fashion. Ken met his chief tailor, Do Thanh Bing, in 2009, with over 27 years in the trade, Bing found a new direction to take his craftsmanship to the next level. Từ ngày gặp Ken cho đến bây giờ thì Ken cũng truyền đạt lại cho mình những cái văn hóa của người người phương Tây đó, những người mà khách nước ngoài, những doanh nhân đó, đó cái cách ăn mặc của họ rất là khác, mà nhu cầu của họ cũng rất là cao. Thì người Việt Nam mình như là chỉ có giỏi về tay nghề thôi, những cái công nghệ hay là những cái cái xu hướng của coi như là trào lưu của xã hội rồi. Thì đôi khi cũng còn phải học hỏi. And we both take great pride in what each other is doing. Uh, 
uh, you know, I'm very proud of the, the way that he approaches everything and that he coordinates all of these wonderful families of tailors together to produce our products. And I think he's proud of the fact that he's working with somebody that understands what he does and, and also that is focused on selling uh, the quality and the premium as opposed to a 24-hour cheap suit. And our journey of uh, discovering the making of a suit does not begin at a showroom like most other tailors, but actually at uh, one of the elegant bars in the heart of Ho Chi Minh City. So why has Ken chosen this to be his location and what difference does it make? I like to choose locations to meet clients that kind of fit with the lifestyle of our brand. Uh, a little bit more upscale, a um, little bit more premium, more relaxed, uh, more friendly. I'm looking for an opportunity to observe them because most of my clients are coming to me for expertise on giving them recommendations on the cut, the colors, the patterns. So if I get a chance to talk with them for a little while and get a feel for their personality and for the way that they want people to perceive them, then it takes a lot of uh, the effort out of my work because I can just naturally go through and start making selections. Certainly the locations that Ken chooses um, commensurate with, with the image that he portrays with his product, with his persona and, and for his clients as well. So we're always extremely comfortable and, and it's, every fitting is an enjoyable experience. Why so much fuss? It all has to do with the keyword bespoke. Bespoke is the more premium and intricate style of tailoring than made to measure. A made to measure seat is simply just a seat structure adjusted to your basic measurement with limited alteration options. Most of these are driven by technology. A bespoke suit, on the other hand, is customised in the smallest details such as stitching, lining or buttons. The product is traditionally hand-sewn to make it exclusively for you. It is entirely made from scratch. Uh, we meet at last. Well, hello, Michael. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Okay, so I'm ready to be enlightened about suits. Could you help me out? Well, I'm looking forward to the journey. Please have a seat and be comfortable. My pleasure. Okay, so I'm a big fan of suits, but obviously my knowledge of suit is still limited. So could you please um, share with me uh, what styles of suits are there? The, there's three main types of suits that people identify with in this industry and the main differences between those have to do with the number of vents and also the way the shoulders are created and the fit of the body. Traditionally, uh, British suits had been the loosest, but in more recent years you're seeing they're very fit to the body. They still maintain the two vents that are familiar to British suits. They still uh, maintain more of a rolled or soft shoulder. American suits now have become kind of baggy by comparison because most American suits tend to be uh, factory made, ready to wear. And they're 
easy to recognize because of the center vent in the back. And then the Italian suits are very distinctive because of the powerful look that they give. They've got the, the larger, stronger shoulders. A very tapered look because of no vent in the back, so they're very tightly wrapped to the body. And so it makes everybody look like Superman. So what sort of materials do you think are exclusive to Vietnam that Vietnam can use as a great advantage uh, in the global market? Uh, I think Vietnam is among the top two or three countries in the world for silk. And for years, I've, I've been very pleased to use silk in our suits for the linings. And you can find such interesting patterns. And so we like to use those where we have clients that do want something a little bit different. Uh, and we're, we're actually able to use them in ties and some other accessory products as well, but very beautiful silks. Okay, so now what would you recommend for me? Okay, so since you're doing most of your presenting while seated and also due to your age and your coloring, dark hair, light skin, I would go with a darker color since you tend to wear white shirts. So I'm going to recommend kind of this really dark uh, sand brown color. Um, and definitely more of a slim cut English style uh, single breasted suit, two button, uh, double vent in the back. Making my bespoke seat required the skillfulness of being himself and partner Đỗ Thành Nhân. These are among the very few craftsmen left in the trade capable of making canvas suits. Từ năm tầm 2 là mình theo ba là làm nghề làm đến bây giờ là 37 năm. Khi mình làm về bên về cán thì có rất nhiều cái mẫu mới tỉnh mình là lại thích là làm là những cái cải khó mà cải mới á khi mình làm xong được á mặc dầu làm á thì nó mất thời gian nhiều nhưng mà lại là làm xong nghề mình thấy sướng tại nghe mà well the the first thing that comes to mind and always has been there in my mind is the passion because it tends to be something that's generational from one branch of the family to the next they pick up some of the best things uh, and it becomes part of their family they stand among the top. Uh, and I think that the Western world is starting to realize that in terms of the tailoring business. So it is roughly around about 10.45 to 10.50 p.m., which is pretty late here in Ho Chi Minh City. And our diligent tailors are adding the final touches just in time for the first fitting. So if you excuse me, I'm rather excited to check out what my suit looks like so far. A bespoke suit could take up to six months for completion. However, our talented tailors have to shorten it to two weeks due to time constraints. However, the tradition and passion now face the puzzle of continuation amongst youngsters. Hiện tại thì rất ít người đi theo. Tôi dạy rất nhiều học trò. Nhưng mà có nhiều người học 3 năm bỏ, hoặc người 5 năm bỏ. Họ ra rồi nhưng mà họ không làm. Con cái thì nhiều lúc nó thích nhưng mà nhiều nó có nhiều công việc ngành nghề khác đó ấy. Nhiều lúc ngành may này cũng vất vả lắm làm cũng ngày đêm rồi. Nói chung con mình sau này nó không theo mình thì biết làm sao giờ. I'm trying to do my best as kind of a one man show in 
providing the tailors an opportunity to slow down, realize the art of their craft, make the best quality suits that they can make, and, and always strive to do better so that they can take much more pride in their work. and the wait is finally over. All right, well firstly, you look amazing. Let's talk a little bit about how you're wearing it. All right. um, you, you've done it properly, and there's a lot of gentlemen that don't do this right. You've got just the top button, mm -hmm. and this is actually an English, what we call English button etiquette, which was kind of set forth around the 1920s, 30s, and 40s by the royal family. Never, ever, ever button this one. And it's the same thing with the waistcoat. Let's check and see what you're doing here. Let's see. Ah, okay, you got it. Very good. All right, so that the waistcoat also has a lapel because mm -hmm. this is a little bit more of a traditional style and it's making a bit of a comeback. Let's look a little bit at the fitting, what we've done here. I noticed before that you like to wear the, the more slender ties. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we've done the lapels so it's a bit more slender so that it matches more with the width of the ties that you use. I want to check a little bit on the back and mm -hmm. on the shoulders because these are also very telling parts. Okay, on the back what we're looking for is we want the, uh, most guys and you also have a bit of an arch here in the lower part of the back, okay? So what we want to do is to make sure that the jacket is also following that arch. Helps make you look tall, helps you make, nice, uh, make you look nice and slender. And I'm looking at the bottom. I think the height of the trouser is pretty good. Check out the lining. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, this is the part that each guy will do a little differently based on his taste. It's, it's, a, it's a very nice combination with this, what I call dark sand colored suit. And then on the right side, guys always say, well, what's this little pocket for? Well, this is where the train ticket would go. Mm -hmm. But the way I use mine, this is where my business cards go. Okay. So there's actually so much inside these, uh, these suits yes. that just looks fine on the outside, but it's just great on the inside yeah. too. And exactly functional. the way I feel inside as well. So as you've seen, I've ended up with such an amazing suit and you would not believe how much I actually had to pay for it. It is actually one sixth of what you would actually have to pay for stuff from the Savile Row. And if you don't believe me, why don't you come over and check it out all for yourselves? And now, as usual, is our section of Time Out. Imagine waking up to this. Or this. Every day. And the corporate is no other than a family member. This is what's happening to Elise from France. Her dog Miu, who she found in Vietnam, sometimes just doesn't listen to her. She's really, really nice, but she is very naughty sometimes. Uh, she's way too excited. Every night she goes through the trash and puts the trash all over the house. She likes to chew on the remote. It's already the fourth one I bought. And uh, even paperwork and uh, food we cannot leave outside because she will chew on it. So today, on this edition of Time Out, we will have Elise and Swan turn their dog Mew into a more obedient and more respectful one. So how will we do it? Let's visit a professional dog training center. At first, it wasn't easy trying to get Mew to go with us. But eventually, she agreed. On the way, her shyness disappeared. She now even looks forward to the trip. It's the first time I'm taking my dog out and I'm very excited because I want her to do new tricks. She's very happy too. The dog training school is called PDS Training Center and it's located about one hour away from Hanoi City. Oh. 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 
Chú cho hỏi PDS có nghĩa là gì ạ? P là Professional, D là Doc, và S là Security. Trong chú này lúc nào cũng trên dưới 100 con, trên dưới 100 con và có khoảng độ trên dưới 20 loại. Chúng tôi huấn luyện là cả chó chơi, chó cảnh và cả chó bảo vệ, phục vụ cho các gia đình, các doanh nghiệp và cả nhà nước nữa. There are many places in Hanoi that train dogs, but PDS is one of the biggest training centers. Owners will send their dogs here to join a boot camp, which lasts three months and will set you back about 500 US dollars. But it's totally worth it. This is just what Xuân and Miu need, so we decided to split up. Xuân and Miu will visit the class and see how the trainers and students are doing. The students in the class are of many different breeds. Some owners even follow their dogs here. Ở đây chúng tôi dạy cho chó rất là nhiều những cái kỹ năng, chẳng hạn như bảo cho con chó nó biết đứng, biết nằm, biết ngồi, biết bắt tay, bắt chân và rất nhiều những cái kỹ năng khác. Và cơ bản nhất là dạy cho con chó nó biết nghe lời chủ. The dogs here listen to the trainer's every command. It's like they can understand our language. Để muốn dạy được một con chó thì khi nó nó làm được một cái 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 động tác nó theo ý của mình thì mình phải khen thưởng nó thật nhiều lên để khuyến khích nó để làm sao nó làm chẳng hạn anh bảo nó nằm. Khi con chó nó nằm được như thế này anh phải 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 vuốt ve thật nhiều. Vuốt ve thật nhiều để cho nó thích. Để làm sao mình bảo nằm nó sẽ nằm. Nó thích ăn cái gì nhất thì đó lấy mình lấy cái đó làm phần thưởng luôn. Nào luôn. Đấy, khi nằm đúng là chúng ta thưởng nó ăn liền. Okay. Okay, đó. Bây giờ tự tự bạn làm đi, tự bạn làm mà. Set, set, set. Okay. Đó. Okay. Đó. Ăn luôn. Đấy khi nó nằm được rồi, cho ăn luôn như thế. Mình sẽ lặp đi lặp lại nhiều lần thì con chó nó sẽ sẽ nghe lời. Để tạo được cái mối quan hệ thật tốt giữa giữa chủ và chó khi nào mà nó, nó coi mình là một người bạn là một người chủ của nó thì nó mới sẽ nó mới nghe lời mình chứ không thì nó sẽ không nghe lời mình đâu. While Swan and Mew are busy training, Elise and I go look for something more fun. What are you doing with your dog? Cái nó làm gì với chó vậy? Chúng tôi đang hiện tại đang tập tấn công bảo vệ chó bảo vệ là như thế nào? Là ví dụ như hô khẩu lệnh, ví dụ như cắn là là tấn công. Hô dừng là dừng ngay. The trainer said the dogs are very well trained. So I will put them to the test. So this thing on my hand right here is a special glove made for the purpose of dog training. A Malinois dog like this can run as fast as 48 kilometers per hour. Okay now, you can do it. Which is a little bit faster than me. The chase didn't last long. Are you okay, Nam? I'm fine. Like, even wearing these very thick gloves, my arms still feel very numb. But you can see how scary and also effective a specially trained dog can be. It's true. High five. High five. So what did you learn today? Uh, we learned uh, some of the basic tricks, like sit down, lie down, give me a paw. We're still practicing. Me wants to stay a bit longer, but unfortunately, it is time to go home. I feel good. I'm very happy. I think it's very good for my dog to be trained by real professionals. So if you're a dog lover and you want to see some really cute dogs... If you're a dog owner and you want your dog to be trained by professionals, then why don't you give it a try at one of Hanoi's many dog training centers? See you next time on Time Out. And that has wrapped up this edition of Expat Living. Do not forget to check out some of our content at www.vtv4.vn or youtube.com slash vtv4go for more of our content. Goodbye for now and thanks for stopping by.